What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Happy to have you guys. As you know, uh, we do multiple interviews across multiple ecosystems for Genfinity and super excited today to have arguably the leading project on the XRPL right now, which is Expector and Dirk, the founder and CEO. How are you doing today, Dirk? Well, busy as usual, but uh, happy to uh, see you again. 100%. So, um, you know, for those that aren't aware, if you could give maybe an introduction of yourself, um, what got you interested in Web3 and uh, what brought you onto the XRPL and then lead into kind of the introduction into uh, how Xpector started as well. That'd be fantastic. Well, I try to keep it as short as possible. Um, I uh, was into property development, uh, legal background, and um, I started, um, well, my attention got drawn, drawn to the uh, XRPL by one of uh, my advisors, Panos. Um, that pointed out that uh, the success of the IOU token launch uh, a year and a half ago, uh, I heavily invested in one of uh, these uh, projects. Um, shortly after, I started purchasing and supporting lots of other projects. And after a few months, I realized that most of them, with all respect, are uh, good efforts, but don't have too much foundation or at least not the means of actually building what they promised to build. So... Um, before I did that, I was like interested in NFTs, uh, specifically for what they actually are, a deed of ownership, a digital deed of ownership. And I had a good friend that was experimenting with uh, some uh, NFTs on ETH. Um, and well, yeah, it was a natural evolution. I um, was thrown into the XRPL community. I uh, got to know those people. Uh, they got to know me. There was lots of friendship and respect. And um, well, at a certain moment in time, I decided to uh, launch an, my own project. Initially, only some NFTs and maybe let's do some business IDs from real worlds and implement them into metaverses. Uh, however, after we discussed with our artist Mao that created the super cool 3D uh, NFTs, um, we said, well, there are, according to us, not really good metaverse projects um even though some of them are successful uh, most of them are building on unity uh, he was a, a specialist in hyper realistic uh, unreal engine stuff uh, and then we decided to do that fast forward we did the ido almost a year ago very successful um then we did our pre-sale and sale of nfts uh, only project on the xrpl that sold out on reasonable prices by the way uh, and then we uh, started uh, recently our uh, virtual land sales uh, which have been uh, a huge success as well it's been uh, almost a month since we started we're now in round two still discounts up to 50 percent by the way um, and yeah well everything is going as planned or even better uh, working with a big team we didn't feel Terra Luna going down, we didn't feel Celsius, FTX, uh, and Silicon Valley didn't affect, affect us. And uh, well, hard work pays off. That's uh, something that uh, gives me a lot of uh, energy to keep on doing it. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, you touched, you touched base briefly on um, essentially coming up on a one year anniversary in April here. I would love to uh, maybe pick your brain real quick because this space moves incredibly fast. Um, and there's there's always you know consistent pivots like from from your standpoint what are some of the biggest lessons learned uh in a in a year that you might have uh and uh you know uh maybe just touch base on the past year your experience really being here for a year uh you don't look like you've aged too much in a year but you probably feel like you've aged quite a bit in a year so definitely well most of it is, an, is a very positive experience. I've uh, met really interesting people, you amongst others. Uh, I've made lots of new friends, uh, good contacts with people that I would have never met. Uh, the whole community thing is a very interesting thing as well. Um, for me, it's about uh, technology and innovation. And it's, uh, it's a new journey in my life. And, uh, and for me, it's uh, mostly about uh, being able to uh, bring it uh, to a good end. Um, what I've learned is that, as myself, most people in crypto don't really know what crypto is or what blockchain is or what NFTs are, what metaverses are, what what Web3 means. Um, so, yeah, there are lots of uh, buzzwords and fashion things that people like to hear. Um, I'm still learning as well. Um, don't trust too many people as well. I've been scammed. I've been rug pulled. I've been 
threatened, I've been extorted, I've been... <laughs> but the good side doesn't uh, is, is probably the thing that I, I remember most. And of course, success, being able to build in a year what we have done during a very difficult crypto period of time. Um, I think that's very encouraging and that uh, shows that um, it is possible even on a chain like the XRPL, which is a niche, you know. Um, and yeah, well, I'm very proud of what we did. I'm very proud of the team and I'm very happy with the community and and not only the Xpector community, but the extended community, the XRPL and all the other projects and other chains that we interact with. Uh, we do all kinds of collaborations. We're happy to support. Uh, we have our art gallery in the community hall that is free uh, to use as a, as a showcase for uh, NFT projects as well which gives mutual exposure so we're happy to to do that and i'm really looking forward to the next year i think uh, it will be very very interesting awesome yeah and you touched base briefly on it um maybe maybe touch base a little bit on you know why the xrpl is the initial chain that um that expector decided to build upon what kind of um utilities does the xrpl add benefit towards the the expector ecosystem and then if you could dive out a little bit because you guys have done a lot of uh, community aspects with uh, HBAR, you've done um, aspects of, of building within Flare um, and probably some integration aspects there. So if you could talk about why XRP, what benefits it adds to X Spectre, and then move into, um, you know, your vision for, for cross-chain and cross-ecosystems, cross, cross ecosystems, that'd be great. Well, it was a natural evolution. I didn't pick the XRPL, the XRPL picked me. Uh, it was mostly from a community uh, aspect. Um, I think that the XRPL is uh, fantastic for what it's built for, moving value fast and cheap. Um, and uh, I think because we are presenting ourselves as chain agnostic project, we are integrating multi uh, multiple chains uh, into what we do. However, the, the smart contract worshipping it's total nonsense. Eh? We, they are not smart and they are not contracts and they can be bypassed at, at several levels. So, well, I think that we agree uh, upon the fact that blockchain should be used where it's useful. And that's it. Because everybody's speaking about mass adoption and then they come with all kinds of complicated blockchain related stuff, which nobody understands. Even the 1% blockchain people don't get it. So it's really fashionable but it's totally useless. Um, it's utopia. Um, and I think that uh, I've made some interesting points regarding decentralization and stuff. Well, there are some things that are very difficult to merge. User-friendliness, mass adoption, decentralization, anonymity won't happen. Yep. Um, so I wanted to give you guys a shout out. Uh, if If you know, if you're watching this yesterday, um, well, by the time we release this, it might be a couple of days past yesterday, but uh, I'll say April 4th, um, you guys announced that Bob Way is now Chief Product Officer at Expector. To give uh, anybody listening to this a little bit of a background about Bob, uh, Bob Way built and managed Ripple's integration engineering team, uh, architect and project manager or product manager for Ripple Connect, um, co-inventor of many aspects of uh, Interledger Protocol. I uh, worked directly with senior senior management at multiple international banks, creating high speed network for cross currency, cross border payments using Ripple Connect and Interledger Protocol. Uh, and now, again, like I said before, the Chief Product Officer at Expector. Um, you're. I'm just interested on the story of how how it even got to this point because that's a gigantic announcement. Obviously, I'm you know, based on the response yesterday from the community and everything. Obviously. Um, a lot of support behind that announcement as well. Maybe give the story of how you got introduced well, to Bob. I've and then to Bob in, uh, in Twitter spaces. And I've been listening to him and following up on his tweets. And uh, in one of our uh, Expector uh, spaces, the Expectacular show every Wednesday at noon, uh, every Monday at noon, as you know, uh, Eastern Standard, we, he was a regular guest. And, uh, and I saw he didn't follow me because, and I, I couldn't send him messages. So I called him out at once at the time and he starts following me and we start texting and we exchanged numbers. We did uh, lots of video calls. And our initial idea was that it would be good from a marketing perspective to have somebody like that involved in the project. And our first idea was to engage him as an advisor for the blockchain related stuff. 
However, it appeared that he had a specific interest in metaverses, virtual worlds, interconnecting things, and so on. And well, instead of um, having him in an advisory role, I uh, asked him, well, Bob, advisors point out to problems and uh, and they don't necessarily come up with solutions. What if you, we offer you this job and, uh, and you will get the responsibility of uh, finding out what the problems are, but coming up with solutions as well. And it took a while. It took hours and hours of, uh, of uh, video calls. Um, I think we like each other. We have uh, respect for each other. I, I respect him tremendously. Uh, maybe it's a father issue. You know, my father died when I was 16 and he was my hero and he's a little bit older than me. Uh, and I, I have deep respect for him. And yeah, I, I even get emotional about it. I'm very happy that he said yes. And I think he, um, with his experience as well, he can bring a, a lot of value. And it shows as well, I, you know, somebody like him, he has a reputation to, uh, to uh, keep high. And we still, even with everything we have done, validator notes, full history note, FTSO on Flare, um, 10 exchange listings, I think that by now we have shown that we are very serious. However, there are always people that are like still having doubts. And lots of people from the XRP army, they're really focused on XRP and not really on projects building on the XRPL. I think that has changed since yesterday. I think that we have big XRP army people that start to get interested in what we are doing and hopefully what other projects are doing as well. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for everybody building uh, on the XRPL. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, <clears throat> the XRP army verbiage is always interesting. I think the XRP community certainly found value in the announcement as well. Um, and you talk about world building and, and kind of Bob's role within um, the product aspects of, of Metaverse, uh, would love to hear your opinion, um, not even your opinion, can you give us a little bit of a description around, you know, how the Xpectorverse, the Xpector Metaverse is going to take shape, uh, just briefly going through some of the roadmap aspects, and you touched base on um, on land aspects, but uh, users within the Xpector Metaverse is going to be, uh, they're going to be able to build parcels on their own land if they have, you um, capabilities and blender and things like that but you also are preloading some aspects to make it easier for user engagement maybe just give us an overview of the metaverse and what that you know digital economy is going to look like within um the expectorverse well it's a lot sir um first of all our roadmap and white paper are a little bit outdated we're moving so fast and for me writing white papers is so frustrating uh, however there will be a new one in the next few weeks um, it will be way more clear and updated. Um, we, well, initially, as I said, it was the idea of building in other metaverses. Building your own metaverse brings quite a few challenges, especially using Unreal Engine with the hyper-realistic graphics. I think that we don't build it as a game. It's built on a game engine, but it's, for me, a, a virtual 3D world that is some kind of portal, a search engine, uh, like Alta Vista was or Yahoo was, that brings people in an environment that is fun to be in to other people's websites, which in this case are structures uh, that they can build on the land that they purchase. And, um, and within those buildings, they can do what they want. They can create a business, they can create a game, they can create whatever. It's easier said than done. Um, we are looking into the possibilities how to exactly do it. There are some legal uh, reasons why it would be better, for example, to have it run on their server, everything that happens within a structure. Um, we will provide SDKs, which enables voice communication, uh, multiplayer, um, uh, all the payment stuff. Um, so that's probably um, the way we will uh, go. However, what we we did realize at this stage is well how will people be able to build blender maya unreal well it has been proven that our community members have a strong buying power very interested very involved as well uh, not the ones that want passive income and let's see what happens they really have good ideas of what to do in there however to incentivize people building we will do several things one of them is an idea that we're still not 
100% decided in, will we or should we build a tool that makes it way easier to create? I think, yes, it'll cost quite a bit of time, quite a bit of money. And one of my remarks was in the past few weeks with AI, should we build it? It will take a year. It will take a lot of resources from the project. And maybe in a year, you will be able to give voice commands in Unreal and have something built as you want it. So it's a bit of a struggle um, where we are um, on that point. However, what we will do in the short term is attract creators. Um, I think um, it are Bob words. We have to appeal to the nerds, the geeks, the guys living in their mom's basement, uh, playing with Blender, Maya and whatever. <laughs> Maybe some other things that they play with as well. <laughs> However, we um, are organizing and it will kick off uh, in the next week. Um, the uh, expector creator contest with uh, prizes up to uh, I, the prize pool is 25,000 US um, in expector assets. Um, we are collaborating with a company that runs an academy, an Unreal Engine uh, Development Academy. Um, we will have a separate Discord channel for creators. Um, we um, they're originally from Syria in the Middle East. They will uh, also put a lot of content out in Arab uh, to focus on the Middle East also to empower those people. You know, lots of people in countries, they have skills, but they don't have the abilities to monetize on it. So I think that if we can bring a couple of hundreds or thousands of people with those abilities to our project um, and incentivize them by not only doing the contest, but giving the ability to NFT what they have built and to sell it on our native marketplace to people that hold land, that have money and IDs to do something, bringing those two together is, is a really nice thing. And it's about empowerment. It's about giving power to the people and giving them the possibility to use their skills, bring buyers and sellers together Together and give them the ability to easily transact and make money. Yeah, and I think that's um, it's a great point. I was going to bring that up, you know, after we even did this interview, that there's probably ideas around just you know creating that feedback loop, like you were just talking about, creating that feedback loop that feeds back into the into the you know the metaverse that Expector is facilitating, which I think is fantastic. So kudos on that. Um, Wanted to ask you, you mentioned 10 uh, listings right now on different exchanges. Uh, a little birdie told me, uh, well, I've been hearing rumblings that there may be another big listing potentially coming up for Expector soon. Um, you want to drop some alpha in here? Well, I count for legal reasons, <laughs> but there are two major things coming this year. One is really close by. Like... <laughs> When you say close, <laughs> like, or like, is close like in Q two? Is close like in anniversary month? Anniversary month, of course. Okay. Anniversary okay. month is the normally we use a case to shoot around. Now it's bazookas this month. Awesome. Um, yeah, if you could touch base a little bit, you, you know, look, you mentioned another huge announcement coming out into twenty twenty three. So I'd like to ask you, you know, what are you most excited about for for this year for Expector? Well, I think short term, the birthday month or the anniversary is really cool. In the next few days, we will um, announce our new launcher for the community hall, uh, which is way more user friendly, um, which includes multiplayer voice enabled chat just to give people the feel um, of how uh, it will work. There's lots of fine tuning to do, but it's a big improvement of the first version, the new website will be online probably uh, somewhere next week. Um, the new white paper will follow uh, very soon. We will have uh, fiat payments um, it, uh, in collaboration with Stripe for land sales. So people will be able to onboard actually with USD um, by purchasing the land. Um, uh, that's an interesting one. And um, well, somewhere before, because I will be uh, present at the XRP conference uh, early uh, May, 5th, 5 and 6th May in Vegas. And before that, we will launch our uh, standalone marketplace. So actually, we're doing quite a few things. Huh? We have our NFTs, we have the metaverse building, we have the creator contest, the tool. Um, but what we are building, we have also a native marketplace where you can buy Xpector, um NFTs and the land in the Xpector native token. But we're doing way more than that. Actually, there are several companies. We have 
Expector, which is a, the first client of another company that we uh, created. And that company creates all the tech that powers it. So it will create the metaverse platform, which can be white labeled for other people, other projects, other chains. Um, and we're building our own marketplace, which is online now in beta version uh, on the Expector native website, um, solely XRPL. However, we will launch a product very similar to other marketplaces uh, on the XRPL, um, on XRP, uh, XRP Cafe and uh, NFT Master XMart. And that will be launched uh, the first week of May, if everything goes right. I'm very careful with deadlines. Um, but at the same time, we are building it not as an NFT marketplace, but as an e-commerce platform that is crypto enabled. Um, so it's a backend system that can be white labeled as well. We already have a couple of projects that will be using it as a premium experience to have their own e-commerce marketplace system on their own website. And it will run through a APIs uh, on our system. Um, one of them is text, uh, text, uh, text RP, by the way. Um, so yeah, well, lots of interesting things coming up. And at the same time, we're not only including um, Stripe and fiat payments, but also integrating other cryptocurrencies. So people will be able to purchase our digital assets uh, as we sell them the land in other cryptocurrencies. In a later stage on the standalone marketplace, it will also be able to uh, mint on other chains. Uh, an interesting concept that we're playing with, trying to profile ourselves as chain agnostic to attract more people to the project, um, because I think we're a little bit limited at this stage by the XRPL. I think we're outgrowing it. Um, we have been flirting with HBAR and Flare. They will be integrated for sure because they're our friends closely uh, related to uh, the XRP community or XRPL community. However, what you guys are doing with, uh, with Genfinity is also fantastic with people from VC, Algorand, uh, Avalanche, and, and so on. I think that um, we should. there should be more collaboration. And to make a project succeed, I think we need as many people as we want. And therefore, we are all trying to appeal to them as well. And one of the things is that we consider even letting people mint their land on the chain they want. Why should it be on the XRPL? Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, uh, you know, from the Genfinity purview, obviously, cross-chain collaboration um, and trying to break as many silos down as possible is, is extremely important to us. Um, should announce during this, obviously, that we're going to be doing, uh, I'll be coming on in uh, the Expectacular show a couple of times a month, uh, trying to break some silos down, bring some uh, from interesting communities on. And then we always host uh, twice a month, we do those big cross-chain kind of one is kind of more community driven. One is kind of more enterprise driven spaces where Expector will be able to come up there uh, as a panelist. And again, just try to break silos down as much as possible. And then I'm pretty excited because we're going to be planning uh, a quarterly event um, with Expector's help to, again, you know, highlight the the use cases of not only Expector, but the XRPO and drive traffic into the XRPO as well as uh, other ecosystems. So that should be pretty interesting. We've done two of those so far in the HBAR ecosystem. Um, some quick stats, you know, we we've basically were able to accomplish like 15,000 wallets within two events, which is pretty, pretty massive. So looking forward to uh, planning and delivering one of those insane events uh, with you guys moving forward for this quarter. So um, yeah, Derek, I think um, unless you have anything else, uh, it's fantastic. Again, congratulations on, uh, Bob Way coming on as chief product officer and looking forward to all the metaverse aspects moving forward, looking forward to the marketplace uh, or the e-commerce platform launching, um, looking forward to whatever announcement you guys have coming up in, you know, this month of the anniversary aspect that you can't talk about due to legal reasons. And uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure, man. And um, looking forward to doing another one of these interviews soon. So uh, thank you very much, Dirk. Well, with pleasure. And I, I have to say that I'm very proud of what you have been doing with Genfinity and your team in the past few weeks and months. Um, I think it really brings people together and it's really the way to go. Thanks very much, Dirk. Really appreciate it, man.